What does this sign mean? A. Uneven road surface. B. Quayside or river bank. C. Steep hill downwards. D. Road liable to flooding. The correct answer. B. Quayside or river bank. Explanation. Exercise caution in these areas, as the road surface is often wet and slippery. There may be a steep drop to the water, and the edge of the road might lack a barrier. What should the driver do? A. Tell the pedestrian in the road she shouldn't have crossed. B. Wave towards the pedestrians who are waiting to cross. C. Wait for the pedestrian in the road to cross. D. Quickly drive behind the pedestrian in the road. The correct answer. C. Wait for the pedestrian in the road to cross. Explanation. Waiting ensures the pedestrian's safety, as pedestrians have the right of way when crossing the street. Some people might take a long time to cross the road. They may be older or have a disability. A police officer asks to see your documents. You don't have them with you. How many days do you have to produce them at a police station? A. 5 days. B. 7 days. C. 14 days. D. 21 days. The correct answer. B. 7 days. Explanation, when a police officer requests to see your driving license, vehicle registration, or logbook, and proof of insurance, and you do not have them with you, you typically have seven days to produce these documents at a police station. What must you do when the amber light is flashing at a pelican crossing? A. Stop and wait for the green light. B. Stop and wait for the red light. C. Give way to pedestrians waiting to cross. D. Give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. The correct answer. B. Stop and wait for the red light. Explanation. At a pelican crossing. When the amber light is flashing, you must stop and give way to any pedestrians already on the crossing. If there are no pedestrians on the crossing, you may proceed with caution. What restrictions apply to people who have a provisional driving license? A. They can't drive at night. B. They can't drive over 30 miles per hour. C. They can't drive unaccompanied. D. They can't drive with more than one passenger. The correct answer. C. They can't drive unaccompanied. Explanation. People with a provisional driving license cannot drive unaccompanied. They must be supervised by a driver who is at least 21 years old and has held a full driving license for at least three years. Additionally, they must display L plates on their vehicle. What does this sign mean? A. Give way to trams. B. Route for trams. C. Give way to buses. D. Route for buses. The correct answer. B. Route for trams. Explanation. 
the sign indicates a route specifically designated for trams. It warns drivers and pedestrians to be aware of trams operating in the area and to follow any additional instructions or rules related to tramways. A cycle lane, marked by a solid white line, is in operation. What does this mean for car drivers? A. They may park in the lane. B. They may use the lane when necessary. C. They may drive in the lane at any time. D. They mustn't drive along the lane. The correct answer. D. They mustn't drive along the lane. Explanation. When a cycle lane is marked by a solid white line, it means that car drivers must not drive or park in the lane during its hours of operation. This lane is reserved exclusively for cyclists. What can result when you travel for long distances in neutral, known as coasting? A. Improvement in control. B. Reduction in control. C. Easier steering. D. Increased fuel consumption. The correct answer. B. Reduction in control. Explanation. Raveling for long distances in neutral, known as coasting, can result in a reduction in control. This is because you have less control over the vehicle's speed and handling, making it harder to respond quickly to hazards or changes in the road conditions. How can you avoid wasting fuel? A. By revving the engine in the lower gears. B. By having your vehicle serviced regularly. C. By driving at higher speeds where possible. D. By keeping an empty roof rack on your vehicle. The correct answer. B. By having your vehicle serviced regularly. Explanation. To avoid wasting fuel, have your vehicle serviced regularly. Regular maintenance ensures the engine runs efficiently, tire pressure is optimal, and all systems are functioning properly, leading to better fuel economy. What hazards should you be aware of when traveling along the street? A. Glare from the sun. B. Children running out between vehicles. C. Large goods vehicles. D. Lack of road markings. The correct answer. B. Children running out between vehicles. Explanation. When traveling along a street with cars parked on both sides, you should be aware of the hazard of children running out between the vehicles. The parked cars can obstruct your view, making it difficult to see pedestrians, especially children, who may suddenly appear from between the parked cars. What could you do to help injured people at an incident? A. Keep them warm and comfortable. B. Give them a warm drink. C. Give them something to eat. D. Keep them on the move by walking them around. The correct answer. A. Keep them warm and comfortable. Explanation. To help injured people at an incident, you should keep them warm and comfortable. This can help prevent shock and provide some relief while waiting for emergency services to arrive. What does this sign mean? A. Telephone box ahead. B. T-junction. C. No through road. 
D. Toilet ahead. The correct answer. C. No through road. Explanation. The sign indicates a no through road, meaning the road is a dead end and does not provide a through route for traffic. It's very windy. What should you do if you're behind a motorcyclist who's overtaking a high-sided vehicle? A. Overtake the motorcyclist immediately. B. Stay level with the motorcyclist. C. Keep well back. D. Keep close to the motorcyclist. The correct answer. C. Keep well back. Explanation. In very windy conditions, if you're behind a motorcyclist overtaking a high-sided vehicle, you should keep well back. Wind can cause the motorcyclist to be blown off course suddenly, and maintaining a safe distance allows you to react appropriately to any unexpected movements. What hazard should you be especially aware of if you're turning left into a side road? A. Traffic congestion. B. One-way street. C. Pedestrians. D. Parked vehicles. The correct answer. C. Pedestrians. Explanation. When turning left into a side road, you should be especially aware of pedestrians. They may be crossing the road you are turning into, and they might not always be immediately visible. Checking for pedestrians ensures their safety and helps prevent accidents. What does the term blind spot mean? A. An area covered by your left hand mirror. B. An area not covered by your headlights. C. An area not visible to the driver. D. An area covered by your right hand mirror. The correct answer. C. An area not visible to the driver. Explanation. The term blind spot refers to an area around a vehicle that is not visible to the driver, typically due to the vehicle's design or positioning of mirrors. It's important for drivers to check their blind spots by physically turning their heads to ensure no vehicles, cyclists, or pedestrians are in these areas before making maneuvers. There's been a heavy fall of snow. What should you consider before driving in these conditions? A. Whether your journey is essential. B. Whether you should fit an amber flashing beacon to your car. C. Whether you should wear sunglasses to reduce the glare. D. Whether you should drive without wearing your seat belt. The correct answer. A. Whether your journey is essential. Explanation. Before driving in heavy snow conditions, consider whether your journey is essential. Driving in heavy snow can be hazardous and increase the risk of accidents. Assessing the necessity of your journey helps prioritize safety and reduces the likelihood of getting stuck or stranded in dangerous conditions. What shape are traffic signs giving orders? A. B. C. D. The correct answer. A. Explanation. 
traffic signs that give orders, such as mandatory instructions or prohibitions, are typically circular in shape. This design helps distinguish them from other types of traffic signs, like warning signs, which are usually triangular, and informational signs, which are usually rectangular. The circular shape ensures that these important signs are easily recognizable and can quickly convey the necessary instructions to drivers and pedestrians. Are passengers allowed to ride in a caravan that's being towed? A. No, not at any time. B. Yes, if they are over 14. C. Only if a stabilizer is fitted. D. Only if all the seats in the towing vehicle are full. The correct answer. A. No, not at any time. Explanation. Passengers are not allowed to ride in a caravan that is being towed. This rule is in place for safety reasons, as caravans are not designed to safely transport passengers while in motion. Ensuring that all passengers remain in the towing vehicle helps to prevent injuries in case of accidents or sudden maneuvers. What does this sign mean? A. Maximum speed 30 miles per hour. B. Minimum speed 30 miles per hour. C. End of maximum speed. D. End of minimum speed. The correct answer. D. End of minimum speed. Explanation. The sign indicating end of minimum speed typically features a circular shape with a blue background and a white number often accompanied by a diagonal line through the number. This sign informs drivers that the enforced minimum speed limit has ended and they are no longer required to maintain the minimum speed previously indicated. What must you do if poor health affects your driving? A. Inform the licensing authority. B. Always drive accompanied. C. Inform your local police. D. Avoid using motorways. The correct answer. A. Inform the licensing authority. Explanation. If poor health affects your driving, you must inform the licensing authority. This requirement ensures that only individuals who are medically fit to drive are on the road, thereby enhancing overall road safety. The licensing authority can then assess your ability to drive safely and take appropriate action, such as imposing restrictions or requiring a medical evaluation. As you approach a pelican crossing, the lights change to green. What should you do if older people are still crossing? A. Wave them to cross as quickly as they can. B. Wait patiently while they cross. C. Flash your lights in case they haven't noticed you. D. Rev your engine to make them hurry. The correct answer. B. Wait patiently while they cross. Explanation. If the lights at a pelican crossing change to green while older people are still crossing, you should wait patiently until they have safely crossed the road. It's important to prioritize the safety of all pedestrians, especially those who may need more time to cross due to mobility issues. What does a sign with a brown background show? A. Primary roads. B. Minor roads. C. Tourist directions. D. Motorway routes.
The correct answer. C. Tourist directions. Explanation. A sign with a brown background provides tourist directions. These signs are used to guide travelers to places of interest such as historic sites, parks, museums, and other attractions. The brown color helps distinguish these signs from other types of traffic signs, making it easier for tourists to identify relevant information. How can driving in a fuel-efficient manner help protect the environment? A. Through increased fuel bills. B. By increasing the number of cars on the road. C. By reducing exhaust emissions. D. Through the legal enforcement of speed regulations. The correct answer. C. By reducing exhaust emissions. Explanation. Driving in a fuel-efficient manner helps protect the environment by reducing exhaust emissions. Lower fuel consumption results in fewer pollutants being released into the atmosphere, such as carbon dioxide, CO2, and nitrogen oxides, NOx. This decrease in emissions contributes to better air quality and helps mitigate the impact of climate change. How can you avoid wheel spin when you're driving on an icy road? A. Drive in a low gear at all times. B. Brake gently and repeatedly. C. Use the parking brake if the wheels start to slip. D. Drive at a slow speed in the highest gear possible. The correct answer. D. Drive at a slow speed in the highest gear possible. Explanation. To avoid wheel spin when driving on an icy road, you should drive at a slow speed in the highest gear possible. This approach reduces the torque applied to the wheels, decreasing the likelihood of them losing traction and spinning. By maintaining gentle and smooth acceleration, you can improve stability and control on slippery surfaces. How do smart motorways prevent traffic bunching? A. By using advisory speed limits. B. By using higher speed limits. C. By using variable speed limits. D. By using minimum speed limits. The correct answer. C. By using variable speed limits. Explanation. Smart motorways prevent traffic bunching by using variable speed limits. These limits are adjusted in real time based on traffic conditions, helping to maintain a steady flow of vehicles. By slowing down traffic before congestion points, variable speed limits reduce stop and start driving minimize the risk of accidents, and improve overall traffic efficiency. There are no speed limit signs on the road. How is a 30 miles per hour limit generally indicated? A. By hazard warning lines. B. By pedestrian islands. C. By double or single yellow lines. D. By street lighting. The correct answer. D. By street lighting. Explanation. A 30 miles per hour speed limit is generally indicated by the presence of street lighting in the absence of specific speed limit signs. In built up areas, a system of street lights placed at regular intervals usually signifies that the default speed limit is 30 miles per hour, unless otherwise posted. This is a common rule used to inform drivers of the speed limit in residential and urban areas.
The conditions are good and dry. When should you use the two-second rule? A. When checking your gap from the vehicle in front. B. Before restarting the engine after it has stalled. C. Before using the mirror's signal maneuver routine. D. When traffic lights change to green. The correct answer. A. When checking your gap from the vehicle in front. Explanation, the two-second rule, should be used when checking your following distance from the vehicle in front of you. It helps ensure you maintain a safe gap that allows enough time to react if the vehicle ahead breaks suddenly or changes speed. At night, what does it mean if you see a pedestrian wearing reflective clothing and carrying a bright red light? A. You're approaching an organized walk. B. You're approaching a traffic danger spot. C. You're approaching roadworks. D. You're approaching a slow moving vehicle. The correct answer A. You're approaching an organized walk. Explanation, if you see a pedestrian at night wearing reflective clothing and carrying a bright red light, it typically indicates that you are approaching an organized walk or event where participants are using these safety measures to enhance visibility for drivers. There's been a collision. How can you help a driver who's suffering from shock? A. Give them a drink. B. Reassure them confidently. C. Ask who caused the incident. D. Offer them a cigarette. The correct answer. B. Reassure them confidently. Explanation. When assisting a driver who is suffering from shock after a collision, Reassuring them confidently can help provide a sense of comfort and stability. It's important to speak calmly and clearly, offering reassurance that help is on the way and providing any immediate assistance or support they may need. What does this line across the road at the entrance to a roundabout mean? A. Stop at the line. B. You have right of way. C. Traffic from the left has right of way. D. Give way to traffic from the right. The correct answer. D. Give way to traffic from the right. Explanation. The dashed white line across the road at the entrance to a roundabout signifies that drivers should give way to traffic approaching from the right. It serves as a visual cue indicating where vehicles entering the roundabout must yield to ensure safe and orderly traffic flow. Some two-way roads are divided into three lanes. Why are they particularly dangerous? A. Traffic in both directions can use the middle lane to overtake. B. Traffic can travel faster in poor weather conditions. C. Traffic can overtake on the left. D. Traffic uses the middle lane for emergencies only. The correct answer. A. Traffic in both directions can use the middle lane to overtake. Explanation. Some two-way roads that are divided into three lanes can be particularly dangerous because the middle lane, which is intended for turning or shared use, can be misused by drivers in both directions to overtake other vehicles.
This behavior increases the risk of head-on collisions or accidents due to unexpected lane changes or conflicts. What could cause you to crash if the level is allowed to get too low? A. Battery water level. B. Radiator to coolant level. C. Brake fluid level. D. Antifreeze level. The correct answer. C. Brake fluid level. Explanation. If the brake fluid level is allowed to get too low, it could cause you to crash because it affects the proper functioning of your brakes. Low brake fluid can lead to decreased brake responsiveness or failure, compromising your ability to stop safely and potentially causing a collision. Therefore, maintaining an adequate brake fluid level is crucial for vehicle safety and control. What should you do as you approach this bridge? A. Change gear. B. Slow down. C. Move to the right. D. Keep to 30 miles per hour. The correct answer. B. Slow down. Explanation. As you approach a bridge, it's important to slow down. Bridges can sometimes have different road conditions or surfaces compared to regular roadways, such as reduced traction in wet or icy conditions. Slowing down allows you to maintain control of your vehicle and safely navigate any potential hazards associated with crossing the bridge. What action should you take when you see flashing amber lights under a school warning sign? A. Keep up your speed and sound the horn. B. Wait at the lights until they stop flashing. C. Increase your speed to clear the area quickly. D. Reduce speed until you're clear of the area. The correct answer. D. Reduce speed until you're clear of the area. Explanation. When you see flashing amber lights under a school warning sign, the appropriate action is to reduce your speed until you have cleared the area. These lights indicate that you are approaching a school zone where children may be crossing the road or nearby. Slowing down ensures you can react to any sudden movements and helps maintain safety for both pedestrians and other drivers in the vicinity. What restrictions apply if you're towing a trailer on a three-lane motorway? A. You must have a stabilizer fitted. B. You mustn't exceed 50 miles per hour. C. You mustn't overtake. D. You mustn't use the right-hand lane. The correct answer. D. You mustn't use the right-hand lane. Explanation. When towing a trailer on a three-lane motorway, you must adhere to the restriction that prohibits using the right-hand lane. This lane is typically reserved for overtaking and faster-moving traffic. Staying out of the right-hand lane helps maintain smoother traffic flow and ensures safer conditions for all drivers on the motorway. How should you signal if you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? A. Signal right on the approach and then left to leave the roundabout. B. Signal right on the approach to the roundabout and keep the signal on. C. Signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you're going to take. D. Signal left after you leave the roundabout and enter the new road. The correct answer. C. 
Signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you're going to take. Explanation, when going straight ahead at a roundabout, you should signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you intend to take. This indicates to other drivers that you are continuing around the roundabout and plan to exit at the next available opportunity. Proper signaling helps maintain traffic flow and ensures clarity for all drivers approaching and navigating the roundabout. How should you rejoin the motorway after a breakdown on the hard shoulder? A. Wait until a vehicle in the left-hand lane signals to you that it's safe to rejoin. B. Keep your hazard lights flashing until you have safely rejoined the carriageway. C. Build up speed on the hard shoulder before looking for a safe gap in the traffic. D. Move straight out into the left-hand lane as you are not allowed to drive on the hard shoulder. The correct answer. C. Build up speed on the hard shoulder before looking for a safe gap in the traffic. Explanation. When rejoining the motorway after a breakdown on the hard shoulder, you should build up speed on the hard shoulder and then look for a safe gap in the traffic to merge back onto the main carriageway. This approach helps you match the speed of vehicles already on the motorway, making your merge safer and smoother for both yourself and other drivers. It's essential to be cautious and ensure there is sufficient space to merge without disrupting the flow of traffic. What does this sign mean? A. No stopping. B. No entry. C. Waiting restrictions apply. D. National speed limit applies. The correct answer. A. No stopping. Explanation. The sign indicating no stopping means that vehicles are not permitted to stop at any time in the area where the sign is posted. This regulation helps maintain traffic flow, prevents congestion, and ensures safety by keeping certain areas clear and accessible for other road users. A horse rider is in the left-hand lane approaching a roundabout. Where should you expect the rider to go? A. In any direction. B. To the right. C. To the left. D. Straight ahead. The correct answer. A. In any direction. Explanation. When encountering a horse rider in the left-hand lane approaching a roundabout, you should expect the rider to potentially go in any direction. Unlike motor vehicles, horses have the flexibility to navigate roundabouts in various directions based on the rider's instructions or the layout of the roundabout itself. Therefore, be prepared for the horse rider to maneuver straight ahead, turn left, turn right, or even make a U-turn depending on the circumstances and route. Do you need to plan rest stops when you're planning a long journey? A. No, you'll be less tired if you get there as soon as possible. B. Yes, you should plan to stop every half an hour. C. Yes, regular stops help concentration. D. No, only fuel stops will be needed. The correct answer. C. Yes, regular stops help concentration. Explanation. Taking regular breaks helps maintain concentration and alertness while driving. It allows drivers to rest, stretch, and refresh themselves, reducing the risk of fatigue-related accidents. Effective planning of rest stops ensures a safer and more enjoyable travel experience for everyone on board. 
What color are the reflective studs along the left-hand edge of the motorway? A. White B. Red C. Green D. Amber The correct answer B. Red Explanation The reflective studs along the left-hand edge of the motorway are typically red in color. These studs serve to mark the boundary of the motorway and provide visual guidance to drivers, especially in low-light conditions or poor visibility. What advice should you give to a driver who has had a few alcoholic drinks at a party? A. Drive home carefully and slowly. B. Have a strong cup of coffee and then drive home. C. Wait a short while and then drive home. D. Go home by public transport. The correct answer. D. Go home by public transport. Explanation. The advice to give to a driver who has consumed alcoholic drinks at a party is to encourage them to avoid driving altogether. Instead, they should opt to go home by public transport or arrange for a designated driver who has not been drinking. This helps ensure the safety of the driver themselves, as well as other road users, by preventing the dangers associated with driving under the influence of alcohol. What should you do as you approach this lorry? A. Move to the right-hand side of the road. B. Make the lorry wait for you. C. Flash your lights at the lorry. D. Slow down and be prepared to wait. The correct answer D. Slow down and be prepared to wait. Explanation When you approach this lorry or truck, you should reduce your speed and be ready to stop or yield if necessary. This is because trucks, especially when turning, may require extra space and time to complete their maneuver safely. Slowing down allows you to react appropriately to the truck's movements and ensures safety for both you and the truck driver. On a road where trams operate, which vehicles will be most at risk from the tram rails? A. Cars B. Buses C. Cycles D. Lorries The correct answer C. Cycles Explanation, bicycles or cyclists are most vulnerable to the tram rails on roads where trams operate. Tram rails have grooves that can be hazardous for cyclists, as bike tires can get caught in these gaps, leading to accidents or falls. Cyclists need to be cautious and cross tram rails at a perpendicular angle to minimize the risk of their tires slipping into the gaps between the rails. What does this sign mean? A place of historical interest b risk of ice c multi-exit roundabout d six roads converge the correct answer b risk of ice explanation it takes up to 10 times longer to stop when the road is icy. When there is a risk of icy conditions, be extra cautious. If you suspect the road might be icy, avoid braking or steering harshly to prevent your tires from losing grip. A casualty isn't breathing normally and needs CPR. At what rate should you press down and release on the center of their chest? A. 10 times per minute. B. 
60 times per minute. C. 120 times per minute. D. 240 times per minute. The correct answer. C. 120 times per minute. Explanation. When performing CPR on someone who isn't breathing normally, you should press down and release on the center of their chest at a rate of 120 compressions per minute. This pace helps maintain effective blood circulation and oxygenation until professional medical help arrives. A single carriageway road has this sign. What's the maximum permitted speed for a car towing a trailer? A. 30 miles per hour. B. 40 miles per hour. C. 50 miles per hour. D. 60 miles per hour. The correct answer. C. 50 miles per hour. Explanation. On a single carriageway road where this sign is displayed, the maximum permitted speed for a car towing a trailer is 50 miles per hour. This speed limit ensures safety and adherence to regulations specific to vehicles towing trailers on such roads. How should you position yourself when you use the emergency telephone on a motorway? A. Stand on the hard shoulder. B. Stay close to the carriageway. C. Face the oncoming traffic. D. Keep your back to the traffic. The correct answer. C. Face the oncoming traffic. Explanation. When using the emergency telephone on a motorway, you should position yourself facing the oncoming traffic. This positioning allows you to clearly see approaching vehicles, making it safer for you to assess traffic conditions and communicate effectively with emergency services or other motorists in need of assistance. It also helps ensure your visibility to drivers approaching from a distance, promoting safety during the emergency situation. How can you help to prevent your car radio being stolen? A. Leave the radio turned on. B. Park in an unlit area. C. Park near a busy junction. D. Install a security coded radio. The correct answer. D. Install a security coded radio. Explanation. To prevent your car radio from being stolen, you can install a security coded radio. These radios require a specific code to be entered before they can be used, deterring thieves who might otherwise target your radio for theft. This security feature makes it less appealing for thieves since they would need the code to activate and use the radio if stolen, thereby reducing the risk of theft. What does it mean if you see this signal on the motorway? A. Stop. All lanes ahead closed. B. All vehicles use the hard shoulder. C. Sharp bend to the left ahead. D. Leave the motorway at the next exit. The correct answer. D. Leave the motorway at the next exit. Explanation. If you see a signal on the motorway instructing you to leave the motorway at the next exit, it means you must exit the motorway at the next available junction or exit. This signal is typically used to direct traffic away from a hazard or incident ahead on the motorway, ensuring the safety of motorists by diverting them onto alternative routes or away from potential dangers on the road ahead. <laughs>